Thank you. I'd like to start by explaining how a single comment changed my life. So when I first got into science, I was visiting Dr. Robert Dudley, and he's a biomechanist who studies how animals fly. And Robert had a student who, who was studying Draco, and Draco is this magnificent flying lizard that you see up here to the right. And Robert and I had, were having a conversation about the wonderful diversity of gliders that live in Southeast Asia. And he made an offhand comment to me. He said, oh, by the way, there are these animals called flying snakes, and no one knows much about them. Flying snakes. <laughs> I was blown away. That comment sparked a passion within me that led to many years of research trying to understand how flying snakes work. Now, both uh, this flying lizard and flying snakes are types of animal gliders. Most of these gliders live in trees, and when they travel through the air, they start by initially falling, and then they level out. And the reason that they level out is because they create lift. Now, many of you have heard of lift. You can experience it directly next time you're driving. Stick your hand out of the window, do it safely, and tilt your hand ever so slightly, and you'll feel it being pushed up. That upward push is the force of lift. And lift is important to gliders because it does two things. So one is it helps to push it up and counteract the effect of gravity that pulls it down. And the other is to push it forward along its path. Now, the way that most gliders create lift is by using membrane surfaces. And so what they do is they have, have parts of their anatomy that they stick out to the side, um, things like uh, legs, and toes and feet, but what if you are a snake and you have no legs and toes and feet? How is it that you create lift? Well, the essential problem is that, is that a snake is, is really a cylinder, and a cylinder is a horrible shape to be for gliding. In fact, if you were to ask an engineer to design a glider from a cylinder, they would think you're nuts. But in point of fact, there are snakes that glide through the air. This is, this is one example. And there are five species. They live, um, all of them live in Southeast Asia and parts of India and Sri Lanka. Um, in body size, they're, they're about the same, same length as this pipe here, and they're about the same diameter as well. And in weight, the best glider um, weighs no more than about uh, half a dozen nickels or so. So they're, they're not very big. Now, the animals that you're looking at here are really gorgeous looking animals, right? But other than that, there's nothing striking about them. They don't have any wings, they don't have any membrane surfaces. So how is it that they're able to glide? So the way that we address that question are by doing experiments like this, where we, we take the animal to a high place, like on this tower, and then we let it glide under its own power, and we have multiple cameras arrayed around it so that we can track its position very accurately. So what you're seeing here is from my very first experiment in 1997. We're about 35 feet in the air, and you're looking down on the snake, so you see its head to the left there. So how does it glide? So what you see is the animal swimming in the air, and then it lands with that and keeps going without a beat. You gotta get it back or it's a very short experiment. So here's that video slowed down, and you, what you can see is the animal's head is moving from side to side, and it's creating these very big waves that move down the body. This is a very dynamic form of gliding, and it's really different than any other form of flight that we know. So let's take a look at gliding from the side. So right about here, you see that the tail looks like it's gonna go over its head, and it's gonna tumble over, head over heels, so to speak. But it never does that, it's always under control. Now I want you to compare the front of the body to the back end of the body. Near the head, the body there is mostly stable, but the back end is moving up and down. So in addition to undulating from side to side like a whip, the animal is also moving up and down in the vertical direction. It's a really complex motion. Now I haven't yet told you how the animal enters the air. So if they're, if they're launching themselves from a branch, what they do is they grip the branch with the back end of the body, and with the front end of the body, they hang in a loop. Now, to launch, what they do is they accelerate the head upwards, and then they push away from the branch. 
And this is a true jump. So this is the only snake that really jumps. They're now becoming airborne, and what you can see it do is it, is it massively changes its body shape. So how does it change its body shape? Let's take a look to the inside of the animal. So here you can see its spine, and you can see ribs, and you can see those ribs rotate forward, and this doubles the width of the animal, and then underneath it forms a concave, concave shape. So what you're looking at here is the snake from underneath. So in a sense, the, the snake is about to glide over you. Now, for some of you, this might be your worst nightmare. <laughs> for me, that's a great day in the office. <laughs> so what the animal does is it flattens its body out from just behind the head to where the tail starts. This snake has no wings, but instead, it turns its entire body into a wing. That is its secret. So let's, let's now examine this wing, and we'll make a virtual cut down the middle of the body. And so we're, we're now looking down the middle of the body, and the snake starts in this round shape, and then it morphs into this flattened shape in the air. Now let's isolate that cross-sectional shape to, to examine it. So you see this cross-sectional shape it's really unusual. It looks almost like a, a flying saucer. Now, most of you are probably more familiar with things like airplane wings. So here's a low lift producing airplane wing, and let's compare them. Your gut feeling here says, well, that snake shape does not look like it should be very good at creating lift. So we had the same question. So what we did is we built models, and we measured the forces on those models to try to ask how much lift it, lift it creates. Now, what's coming up are some arrows uh, with moving air. All this, all this means, so the snake moves down at an angle, and if you stop the snake, it's equivalent to the air moving up at it. So that, that's, that's all I'm, I'm showing here. So we did our experiments with our models, we measured the forces on them, and what we found is that the snake shape is able to create a significant amount of lift. So, in fact, the, the, the lift coefficient is 1.9 or at best. All the lift coefficient is, it tells you how much lift that shape can, can generate. So how about our more familiar airplane wing? Well, we see our, the, the lift coefficients are, are roughly si similar. This is really surprising. This snake shape is able to generate a similar amount of lift to an engineered airfoil. Not bad for a snake. So one other feature that, that you might have noticed is that the snake cross-sectional shape is symmetrical from the left side to the right side. But the airplane wing is rounded on one, one end and tapered at the other. Well, what if we were to flip these wings over? What would be the ramifications of that? Well, the airplane wing would still generate some lift at best. But if you were traveling in an airplane and the wing flipped over, you'd be in trouble. If you're the snake shape, it's not a problem because when we flip it over, we get the same amount of lift and that is because the shape is symmetrical. Now, what's that have to do with the snake gliding? So let's take a look at the snake from above. And again, the snake is moving forward in this direction here and that means that the air is moving over it this way. Now, what I've done is I've placed a little blue tab on the right side of the animal and you, you can convince yourself of that, follow the head down, and that is really the right side. And that tab is facing into the oncoming air. But we know that the snake is undulating in the air. It's moving back and forth like this. So its body posture is continuously changing. So let's look at another point in time, and we see that that blue tab, which is the right side of the animal, has now flipped around to the other side. It's now facing away from the oncoming air. If you're in an airplane, or if you're in an airplane wing, this is a problem. If you're a snake, it's not a problem because the airfoil is symmetrical. It generates the same amount of lift in both configurations. If you are a snake and you want to become a glider, having a symmetrical airfoil is actually a really clever solution. Okay, so 
This now begs the question, why even bother to undulate? So the animal is moving back and forth. Why not just hold yourself still in one posture like this gliding mammal um, up, up to your left? So let's take a look at the, the symmetry of the body as a whole. So I've drawn a line down, down the midsection of the animal, right? So you are symmetrical from left to right, and so is this mammal when it's gliding. But if you look at the snake, the snake is decidedly not symmetrical from its, from its left side to its right side, and that's for the body as a whole. Now, what are the problems with, with this? Well, because of this, you might create more force on one side than the other, and this will tend to rotate you in the air and perhaps making you tumble out of the sky. But the snake never does that. How so? Well, let's take a look at a posture of the snake at a later point in time, and let's superimpose these. And what you see is that the snake creates an overall symmetrical body posture on average over time. So we think that the reason that the snake undulates is so that it can be stable in the air when it's gliding straight. But can the animal only glide straight? Watch this. This is a turn. So the animal comes out, it flips its tail over, it takes a 90 degree turn in about the space of a meter, <laughs> and it scares my poor colleague half to death. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a sharp turn, it's, re it's really amazing. Um, so <laughs> let's summarize here. So this is a snake that can jump out of trees with no legs, it can glide straight and under control, and it can maneuver on command. All of these things are unexpected for a snake, and they are not the things that you would predict if you were an engineer. And that brings me to my last point, which is that we need to continue to look to nature for inspiration and design, because undoubtedly there are other surprises out there like this one, and the reason is that evolution has and continues to shape organisms in ways that we can only dream to imagine. Thank you.